paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Want to know how to take a cold, industrial loft bedroom and warm it up so it feels like home? We're going to show you how, right now. Great design comes from a winning formula. Mine is as basic as a set of building blocks. Put them together, add up the results, and you've got a sensational room. Andrew's bedroom is the perfect case study to demonstrate how to take a large industrial loft space and give it warmth and personality. I want the bedroom to make a statement, and I want that statement to be POW! <laughs> to punch up a room with great architectural features, we're focusing on fabrics, drapery, paint, flooring, accessories, artwork, and furniture. I love the kind of gritty, industrial, true loft feel, but it feels to me like this needs some softening. Right now, this is a bachelor pet. I'm guessing this bachelor doesn't want to be a bachelor forever. This is the classic you and me. Right? Yeah. You love antlers, I love softness. If you and I do what we do best together as a team, we'll be able to create a bedroom that works for him and potentially for someone else. There are many elements of a converted industrial space that make it appealing. It has a vintage vibe. It has a cool factor. Our job is to build on that and create something that feels like home. Right now, the bedroom has a bed, built-in storage, and rugs that are way too small. I think that you can tell the story of a cool concrete floor without showing all of it. In a room this large, the bed should be the focal point. The polished concrete floor needs a statement rug to warm it up, maybe a chair and some other pieces and accents. Plus, we have to address two full walls of windows. Fabric's the natural jumping off point for such a wide open space. It's really gray and really brown in there, so I right. thought maybe bold reds, you know, hits of color. I feel strongly about decorating to the, the loft vernacular. When you think loft vernacular, what do you see? A little bit of sort of the, the architectural salvage thing, some super industrial rough hewn kind of stuff with chip and As you meat. find it. As you find some it. Some metal. Exactly, okay. like some really rough stuff yeah. mixed with some super fine things. I love the juxtaposition of the rough and the fine. Hold right? on, I got an idea. Paisley? Love the masculine, too traditional for me, I think, for that space. No, no, a thousand times no. That's like a little boy's bedroom. Okay. <laughs> Phew, just checking if we're on the same page here. Yeah. How about dragon? That is one of my all-time favorite fabrics. I would never have pulled that out for a man's loft, but that said, it has all the other things that I want in terms of the color and the boldness. What if you went and, and introduced teal? Doesn't this feel kind of like gears in a machine? Like, doesn't that have the strength? It's got a bold pattern. Definitely. It's really graphic. It feels kind of industrial chic, doesn't it? When I look at it, I see almost like a Celtic thing yeah. there, which is good dragons. for me. Celtic dragons. There. Sure. <laughs> Now we just have to find everything else that goes with it, because you know what? We're going to be looking at a, over $150 a yard for these fabrics. Okay. So we're going to have to think about how we want to use them for dramatic effect and fill in everything else. Like, these are not the drapes. If you think I'm going with a floral-themed room, you need to think again. This is actually a dragon fabric. It is bold. It is masculine. It has strength. It has impact. This is not a delicate, prissy, cabbage rose floral. Drapes will instantly warm up a large space, but they shouldn't burn a hole in your pocket. $5.99. I believe we've found a solution. Sometimes we think alike, and other times we think completely differently. Tommy's on a different track. Well, I went on purpose to try and find some pattern and color to put on the walls for drapes in Andrew's room. I did the math mm -hmm. on how much fabric we need. Okay. So if we put drapes on all windows, we need about 56 yards. Whoa. The ceilings are so high that chances are Andrew could take these drapes to another location and just shorten them. It'll have lower ceilings wherever he's going. Or if he chooses something that would appeal to a wide range of people, he can sell the drapes. The best solution in this case is to go with a solid. Keep stuff this big neutral. 
and we could pull out an accent band, either teal or red, mm -hmm. and run it down the leading edge, yeah. or we could run it across the bottom. We don't want to paint the brick, and we don't want to paint any of the wood. So we're dealing with a pale gray scenario, and we have to do something to liven it up. Strike up the bands. Turns out 60 yards worth of drapes for all these windows will only cost about $500. Do you really think that this is going to appeal to the woman in his life? Well, if the woman in his life is named Gary. Drapes will bring the warmth, and to bring the personality, we're going to use the dragon fabric on the bed. Dragon fabric, it's the center point of the room. It's right. the focus of the room. Mm -hmm. Forget putting it on a chair, let's make it the bed. Agreed. But what I was wondering is, along the side rails, what about using something more durable? Mm -hmm either walnut to tie in with the storage cabinets. That would be stunning. Or would you do leather? You know I would do leather. Leather is unusual for you. You don't do a lot of leather. Well, I just thought baseball glove factory, yeah. right? That's what the loft originally was. Baseball gloves are made of leather. Wouldn't it be fun to add a hit of leather somewhere? There? I can totally source that. So that way, I think that the dragon fabric has this exuberance and this fun to it. Yeah. And then give it that hit of guy with the leather. Sure. So that's the bed. Now, how about the chair? What if we did something that was like a classic men's chair, like a wing chair or a club chair or something that feels very like a guy's chair? Well, a wing chair could be great in this space because it's got the extra height. Right. The question is what to put on it. If we've got this very heavily patterned bed, then don't we need something to support it that's also almost as busy? Is it the gears? Why not? It's a great pattern and it will look beautiful on a wing chair in the sense that a wing chair has those curves going for it already. I find that if you're using a bold pattern fabric, it often looks best if you pipe it in a contrast fabric. Right. Not something to call attention to the piping, mm -hmm. but something to act more as an outline and right. a support to the original fabric. So what about using this linen, which has the exact same color as the background? Great idea. Perfect. We're warming up this industrial loft bedroom by rearranging the layout, adding drapery, and some knockout fabrics. How about dragon? Coming up, paint? flooring and artwork. So never leave home without your fabric sample, ever. This loft bedroom is the perfect case study to demonstrate how to warm up an industrial space and make it feel like home. We started with two showstopper fabrics. $5.99. And saved some bucks by choosing a less expensive neutral fabric for drapery. Time to liven up these walls and we're going to our dragon fabric for some ideas. Originally, this entire loft was painted in one shade of drab beige. Now, we've got an intense mustard called Express Yourself and this beautiful rich blue called Blues. The combination of seeing one against the other is what helps us create impact and drama and brings the space to life. If you're living in an open concept space and feeling like you can only choose a single color because one space connects to the next, I think you can break colors anywhere you have a sharp corner. Now, if you have a really, really good painter, you can break it on an outside corner. But the line has to be laser straight. If you're feeling not so sure about being able to get it as beautifully crisp as this, you can break it in an inside corner like this. It's a lot easier. But the number one rule I have is anywhere you have a corner, it's a perfect opportunity to change a color. That takes care of the walls. Now for this room's splurge item. What's your take on concrete floors? Concrete floors I like. Dance floors in the middle of a bedroom? I think we have a bit of a problem. A large industrial space could use a large carpet to give it human scale and livability. This bedroom runs 16 by 19 feet and the rug has to fit under a king-size bed. 10 by 12 ought to do it. I'm thinking something more along the lines of the rustic. This is a gorgeous rug. Good reds. Not Good bad. Paints. I find the red a little bit overpowering. We can probably flip quickly through some of these. How about this one? Uh, this is a no for me. New production. The colors are too strong, too murky. I find that the semi-antique carpets have a beautiful, clear coloring. So natural vegetable dyes. You don't get the intensity necessarily of this black indigo kind of border, but I feel like the color sense is generally better with a semi-antique or an antique carpet than brand new production. Yeah, I agree. They just don't do it like they used to. Ah, um, yeah? Is that softer? Definitely. And 
fantastic colors. I think that if we're gonna link this kind of a carpet to that kind of a fabric, it should match as closely as is humanly possible. So never leave home without your fabric sample, ever. You have to see the two of them together. 10 feet by 12 foot eight. It was 3,850. Yeah. Now it's 2,900. Wow. A handmade rug is an investment piece that will be with you for a long time. Plus, it adds warmth and character. This is a huge statement within the space. Woo, this is, this is good. Item. Okay. Once you splurge, you have to save. In a space this vast, you need to add some soul, make a unique statement. Why not look at what you've already got with a fresh perspective? Aw, that's Grandpa, and this is Grandpa's cool war stuff. These kinds of items are not doing anybody any good in a box. These were Andrew's grandpa's medals from the war. Awesome looking, great color, excellent with our scheme. I would love to frame them up and maybe find a home for them in the room. Custom framing your special objects means you'll be showcasing them for their sentimental and decorative value. I brought you some treasures. So all of these medals belong to my client's grandfather. And I guess there's some importance, this is why I have the photograph, as to the order in which they appear. So I was hoping we could put all of them into one frame, but they look sort of ratty on the ends, and I don't think we should cut them. The best way, keep them in the original condition, we just make a little slit in the mat board, yeah. and we'll slide the ribbons through there. I like the, the mat finish of this. Okay. I also like the gloss. Go to the glossy because it has the depth that we need. Oh, I see. So once you have the thickness of the glass, then a little bit of a space for a sort of shadow box effect, yeah. then the metals, then the map board, that'll never be thick enough. Exactly. You want about three quarters of an inch in there. Let's go with the glossy blue, the deeper frame, yeah. and then just use a creamy white mat so that they pop. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Look for artwork that mirrors the style of your dwelling. We're going to supplement Grandpa's medals with vintage photography that has an underground train motif, since the loft is sleek and urban. Drab beige walls got a blue hue. We found a statement rug that's the ideal complement to our jumping off fabric, and we're showcasing Grandpa's war medals. Next up, big accessories for a big space and accent fabrics. I see your navy blue and I raise you. I'm guessing this bachelor doesn't want to be a bachelor forever. It's being softened up with dramatic fabric. Definitely. A rug with charisma and color. It's a minor fix on walls, and we concentrate more on the furniture. Agreed. The dragon and leather bed is coming along nicely. Doesn't this feel kind of like gears in a machine? This Celtic fabric is making a huge impact on the curvy wingback chair. And we're embracing plaid. It's as classically masculine as our colors, and like every this. scheme needs a blend of fabrics for interest. What do you think of this? Oh, that's nice. I like the idea of plaid with the floral. Mm -hmm. It's a nice counterpoint to the floral. I see your navy blue and I raise you cream. That is a really, really nice plaid. Do you like that? Yeah, I would buy that for myself in a heartbeat. It's got the gray, it's got the red, it's got the yellow, it's got the green. It's kind of got a lot of the colors that are in this, mm -hmm. but yet it has a softness to it. It's beautiful, and it doesn't have a specific blue in it that's going to take us in a certain direction because we really wanted to pull out the teal right. in our dragon fabric. Love it. How much do we need? I think we could get three yards of this, enough to do two big pillows on the bed, and that way it'll give a menswear accent to the bed, which will have a ton of padding on. Nice. The right accessories amp up any space. A large room with tall ceilings allows us to go big. Think about making a collection of diverse and unique elements. If they have some patina, some character, some age, or a history behind them, they'll help you create a far more dynamic space. These frames are actually vintage tire molds. Almost anything can be turned into a mirror. The mirrors totally jibe with the urban feel of the loft, and when you stack one above the other, they function as a full-length mirror. What is that all about? This is Andrew's storage solution. Andrew has a lot of storage. I thought we were going to get rid of some of his storage. I know. Andrew has a lot of closed storage. In fact, he has a whole wall of it. But he doesn't have anywhere to put something down. That's what I like about it. See? I don't like things going back into closets when they've been lightly worn. Not dirty, not perfectly clean. Perfect candidate for hooks. And since he has a 
built-in wall of storage. It's not that easy to install hooks inside the closet, so I'm with you. A coat rack is the perfect solution. We're almost there. Now, in order to put the comfy into Andrew's large loft bedroom, we need a blank slate. It's out with the old and in with the seriously cool. I hope this is the right one. I don't feel like lugging another one in. Ah. Oh. So pretty. This is interesting. How beautifully the blue goes with the blue of the wall. It's fabulous. If you've got an idea for a piece of furniture and you can draw a sketch, you can have anything made. When designing a custom piece, you always have to keep in mind exactly where it's going. In this case, I have very low window sills in this room. They're only 30 inches high, but 30 inches is too low for a bed overall. So what I did was I took the overall height up to 36, but then I carved out a scoop so that the actual side of the bed and the side of the window sill are at the exact same height. It's always good to keep site conditions in mind, and that way it looks like it's perfectly tailored to the space you've designed it for. Underscaled bedside lights are a common decorating mishap, but it's easy to avoid. If you've got a king-size bed, you need a light fixture that has a decent scale. You need it to have some magnitude. Make sure that you don't end up with something that gets dwarfed by your large bed. It's time to choose a bedside lamp, and I think the only way to do that is to bring them home and try them in place. So I've got three different options to show you. Option number one, what do you think? It's the right height, gets the light down to what you're reading. Love the multicolored glaze with the fabric, very matchy, and it has the vintage vibe that you wanted. I like it a lot. Option two, we have black to pull out some of the strong black that's in the fabric. What do you think? It's got a modern base and a really traditional shade that don't work together for me at all. Don't like it. I think it's too shiny and too masculine. Option three is lemon yellow sunshine. Ms. Richardson, we have ourselves a winner. Oh, yes? Based on the fact that it, again, is the right height, it's the vintage vibe, but it's a solid block of color. We've got a red table, a blue bench, an orange console. I think we need a solid yellow lamp. When you live in a loft, strike a balance between softness and the original hard edge features. Use fabrics where they add drama, go big with accessories, and think outside the box. A coat rack is the perfect solution. We'll see how it all comes together next. <laughs> so how do you take a large industrial loft space and give it warmth and personality? Concrete floors I like. Dance floors in the middle of a bedroom? I think we have a bit of a problem. Fabrics and color add some life to the gray space, as do accents that are rustic and fine, plus some nostalgia. Now this industrial space is home sweet home. Are you ready to see it? Let's take a look. This bedroom is a combination of some industrial and some finer elements. So what's the rule of thumb when it comes to mixing and matching? For me, it's about a ratio. You have to have equal amounts of both styles in order for them to work appropriately together. So in the industrial department, we have the ladder, the blue side tables, and the console. On the finer side, we've got a beautiful new bed, a fine carpet, and the upholstered wing chair. By keeping both of these in equal balance, nothing looks out of place. The dragon fabric isn't for everyone. It has an unusual color palette, but that's what makes it interesting. We started out with something that was a very bold, patterned fabric. All we really needed to do, and this is very simple, is extrapolate other fabrics in similar colors from any of the colors within that fabric. Sprinkle them around the room fairly evenly and you've got yourself a great scheme. Your drapes need to be the same fabric throughout the room, but they don't have to be the same application. In this case, I decided to go for Roman blinds behind the bed because they're crisp, but I wanted a little bit of softening on the opposite wall, so drapes were the right solution there. The real soul and the real personality in any room comes from the objects that belong to the client or the person who lives there. And in this case, we took the family heirlooms that belonged to Andrew and sprinkled them around the room, with the most significant one being really his grandfather's medals. It's not unusual for Tommy and me to 
disagree a little bit. I know that Sarah had a very feminine agenda, or at least wanted to bring part of that to the table, and I really wanted it to remain within the bachelor loft feel. Here's what we've ended up with, a space that has equal representation of both the masculine and the feminine. Have very graphic bedside lamps because they're a great color and they're a terrific shape but if you really look at them that sort of hourglass kind of silhouette is a little bit feminine but I do think that if you had to sort of say one side or the other one out it's still a guy's room. Best place for the bed is on the wall that you see when you immediately walk into the room. After all the bed is usually a feature. You can run your area rug whichever way you like. You can run it parallel to the bed or you can run it perpendicular. What I like about running it perpendicular is you tend to have more room to walk along the side of the bed so that you don't have one foot on the cold hard concrete and one foot on a soft rug. I think it's important to mention that when you walk into Andrew's bedroom, <laughs> it's pretty obvious in terms of color and pattern what makes such an impact visually. But what I think is the most important achievement in terms of taking his room from what it was to what it is, is that we've taken a room that was in no way functional and made it a really workable, usable space for him to live in. I love the layout. I love the, the window treatment, which I, I had no idea um, how that would come together. And then I love the personal touches, so my grandfather's medals look fantastic and it looks like a place you want to come home and relax in. Case study closed. This large industrial loft bedroom is now a warm and inviting space, ready to enjoy. Can I ask you a question? Yes. How high are your heels today? I feel like I'm talking Lush. to you like this today. Like, do you mind? Oh. Could you maybe the next time you go shopping keep me in mind? Because we spend a lot of time together. I'm like, so what do you think about the dark side or the light side, Sarah? <laughs>